yours. Merci, Dana. Merci à tous pour nous avoir euh, ici. Je vais aussi euh, euh, faire le, les changements entre les langues parce que entre anglais et français, je suis euh, très, très au oh, plus accommodée avec, euh, avec l'anglais. Uh, so thank you, Dana, so very much, and thank you to, to everyone willing to, to join us uh, for this particular section uh, today. I'm so happy that we could take part in this even online, if not uh, in person. So it's great that we have this opportunity nowadays. Um, I will start with an apology, which is something that I really keep to, to doing because, as Dana said, uh, as head of department, as, as many of us here, I do hold several, let's say, professional hats. So uh, while uh, do, uh, delivering this uh, talk, this presentation, I also have a, a commission of experts for higher education for uh, the reaccreditation of a program within our department. So I briefly extracted myself from that um, uh, visit to, to be able to join you here. And so I'm so very sorry that I will not be able to stay until the end. Uh, and hopefully I will keep you for a very, let's say, short and effective, efficient uh, amount of time. Is that okay? Yes. yes okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Then I will just uh, uh, go ahead, right, and uh, share screen as I have been um, instructed so very wisely by my colleagues here. And thank you so much for this. Uh, you will briefly see just some um, ideas from the presentation because most of it is going to be, um, let's say, um, referring to literature and to examples from uh, prose, fiction and literature. And so I just wanted to have in the PowerPoint the main ideas, an overview and some key points that I will also go over in the, in the presentation. Okay. Uh, the title is Memory and Narration, Romanian Diasporic Viewpoints or Perspectives, as I like to call them, uh, on America. Uh, it will um, look at, and I think that I should also try to do a slideshow, right? Yes, okay. Uh, it is uh, visible, right, for everyone on the screen? Yes, okay. Um, so the overview of the presentation will look at um, instances of exile in the United States, which is very much, uh, let's say, a characteristic of Romanian diaspora um, before the Cold War. Uh, and it may be transition or transformation to the features of diaspora or transnational movement uh, with the end of the Cold War, 20th century and beginning of 21st century. Um, all of the, uh, let's say, examples that I'm uh, going to refer to or give uh, are taken from uh, pieces of fiction, of prose, for unity of genre, genre um, because literature becomes a ways and means to remember and tell the story, memory and narration, of how the new country or the new land, let's say, in which these Romanian exiles and then diaspora um, are transplanted. Uh, so how this country is perceived and experienced, of course. Um, as I said, we are going to look at and take examples from original pieces of prose belonging to these representatives of Romanian diaspora in the United States. Uh, key points, uh, some of the concepts and theoretical references that I'm going to over and over, um, uh, let's say going back and forth, uh, among in order to sustain examples are identity, exile, diaspora, transcultural and migration phenomena related to all of these other concepts. Uh, for the primary sources, I do have the actual novels and pieces of, uh, pieces of fiction that I'm going to refer to uh, as a bibliography at the end of the presentation. But what is very important is that writers or intellectuals writing uh, whose pieces uh, I will be referring to are 
Andrei Cotrescu, Norman Manea, Petru Popescu, Gabriel Pleșa, Domnica Rădulescu, Mirela Roznoveanu and Alexandra Târziu. Uh, there are many more others to be, uh, uh, let's say, included in uh, this uh, diaspora community of Romanians, of intellectual Romanians in the United States. However, for the purpose of um, giving the examples of exile and diasporic community and than their experiences in the United States. Uh, these I have found as very relevant and with pen, plenty of examples to sustain, let's say, the, the discourse. Uh, in terms of time frame that I will be uh, referring to, Cold War and post-Cold War writings of Romanian diaspora representatives in the United States. Um, You also have here some of the main ideas that I will be referring to. Uh, and because you already have them on the slides, I will uh, dive directly into the subject and start by saying that previous to the end of the Cold War, the Romanian exilic experience is marked by the feeling of estrangement, of loss in the new country, the in inability to cope with a new reality, new language, and the longing for home. As Octavian Paller underlines in Mihaela Cristea's collection of interviews, quote, not long ago, exile had for us something in common with death. It was definitive. A Romanian who left Romania had to say to himself or to oneself, to be politically correct, I am doing it for good. From this standpoint, Romanian exile literature during this period is focused rather on the study of identity formation, personal initial experience and the tragedy experience through forced removal and transplantation in the new country. Andrei Codrescu, for example, says, quote, I imagine exile as a concrete territory, a psychological place of vast dimensions with precise contours, own customs, and typical tourist attractions. Geographically, it could be Paris, Rome, New York, Buenos Aires, San Francisco, San Francisco but spiritually, it began, began at the borders of the Soviet Empire. America functions not so much as a desired material fixed space, but as the idea of freedom. It is the international idea state, quote, the only functional anarchy system in the world, as Codrescu says, unquote. The idea of America as pinnacle of superior experience is being relative, its inherent superiority is being fractured, reconstructed in the imagination of the diasporic subject, in search of an ideal place that stands for his idea of being free of escaping communism. Because, quote, I was living in my country and dreaming about America, says Petru Popescu. I saw America in a forsaken cinema in Bucharest at the end of the 60s during a short cultural break before communism. The dream of a third world boy about the country he had never seen could not be censored. So dreaming about escaping and dreaming about being in this new uh, uh, land of freedom um, is in the future, yeah, migrants mind already. In the attempt to show the Romanians that depravity and lost direction of capitalism back then in cinemas uh, in communist Romania were shown American movies, which under some form or another blamed and criticized the effects of capitalism in the American society. But as Pope Petru Popescu said, I don't know exactly how this happened, but we, dumb Romanians, who went to the movies to laugh, to cry, to feel good and, and eat sunflower seeds, uh, and to utter an O oh or an A ah at the sight of the dresses worn by the stars and at the sight of their cars, we were never horrified by capitalism or by America, as it appeared on screen. On the contrary, we loved that America was bad. We loved energy, the, uh, New York's energy. We loved that the main characters stayed and remained together. Uh, even at its worst, America couldn't be wrong. Drawing on this theme of exile as initial instance of the Romanian contact with America, 
Uh, in the case of another Romanian representative, Norman Mana, um, he himself declared in an interview in Supplementul de Cultură that the central theme of his latest book, Vizuina, The Den, which appeared in 2009, is that exile. All of his characters are uh, representatives of different nationalities of exiles in the United States of America. But for them, America represents the need for irresponsibility, the need for freedom or freedom per se. Uh, America is the land of the wanderers and exile develops a most complex metabolism of survival. America also becomes, as I said, irresponsibility, freedom, the land of consumers of illusions, and these are all quotes, and an entire array of metaphors that render both the excitement but also the dread of being in this new place. Uh, America is also referred to in, um, Ma, uh, in um, Mana's uh, novel as the afterworld, New York is the town on the moon, or World Trade Center is the Babel Tower. To, to give some other examples, uh, in Gabriel Plesha's uh, novel, um, The Trilogy of Exile, Jenny, another Romanian representative of these um, waves of emigrants or several emigrants to the, to the United States, uh, has problems with adapting to the new re reality. And she confesses that my body is here, quote unquote, but her mind is there. Ion, another uh, uh, character, which is a Romanian migrant in Gabriel Plesha's trilogy, uh, realizes that he will never be anything other than what he was born. And he has problems deciding whether to marry a Native American, Sue, uh, or not, because, quote, this was not only a simple relation man-woman, but a union between two different cultures, two ways of sentimental engagement, if you will. Um, in the case of Domnica Radulescu, uh, another Romanian writer in the United States, uh, in her main, let's say, novel related to escape from communism and then being transplanted into the new world or into the new land, train to Trieste, trenul de Trieste, the main character, Mona Maria Manoliu, endures the experience of communism, runs away to the United States through Italy by train. Mona struggles with the new realities in the, her second world. She cannot understand Ron and Gladys, the American couple in their 50s, who have helped her in the initial stage of her staying in America. For them, Mona is a work of charity, unquote. They are both heavily involved into church activities and pro-life activism. And so for Mona, what begins with a slight feeling of ill at ease with these people and their friends, who they all ask me boring questions about my country and my parents. They ask me what language we are speaking in Romania and there is a McDonald's in my country. When I tell them that there isn't, they answer that certainly Romania must be a wonderful country, but they wouldn't be able to live here as there is no McDonald's. And so this slight feeling of ill, of Ill ends in total rejection um, of these Americans, because for Mona, I get really frightened when Ron and Gladys ask me to convert to their religion and to accept Jesus Christ in my life. And when they take me to their reunions in the underground of the church, where they talk about abortion and uh, about how blacks and Jews are anti-Christ and corrupt the country with drugs and homosexuality. So the discrepancy between the these people as messengers of the church and their subversive beliefs, the two-faced America, as I would call it, drives Mona Maria away and symbolizes the initial rejection going both ways, from immigrant to the host land, but also from the host land towards the immigrant. Um, the same Mona Maria says, I feel as frightened as I was when the Securitate asked me to become an informer back home. 
but it is even worse now because I was supposed to start a new life here, to walk free on the streets of Chicago, listen to jazz and learn to become a journalist. This should be my freedom experience. Okay. Uh, there is still enough time, right? I haven't. Uh... Okay. Um, the reality of living one's home echoes forced removal from homeland under the rubric of almost pattern-like circumstances for the Romanian emigrant. Um, escaping, that is, the totalitarian regime, trying to start over and find meaning in the new land. Because some of us came to America to be free, but the majority of us, unquote, came here to eat. So the actions and reactions of each diasporic identity lead towards multiple subject positions and the multiplicity of fractal identities. The permanent tension between self and other recalls what W.E.B. Du Bois coined as double consciousness or second sight into a glamorous reality, which upon closer scrutiny reveals fierce competition for survival. The struggle between identity as essence and identity as context or conjecture is always present and in this particular context, if exile refers to a more strict, more narrow relation with a new home, then the next stage in this, uh, let's say, freeing from the old homeland, diaspora, refers to a double relationship of dual loyalty that migrants hold over ex country and new country. Once first contact is made, the translation and immersion into the new culture are enacted, and the initial discussion on exile and identity reconstruction under exilic parameters give way to a transnational diasporic perspective, which allows America to emerge prominently in what Mary Louise Pratt called contact zones. And after the initial rejection and strain relation, um, quote, I feel how my frail roots enter deeper in the soil, next, nestling with the stubbornness of a weed which begins to live on the sidewalk of Chicago, unquote, from Dominica Radulescu. And slowly, in the Chicago cold, again, quote, I learn how to manage freedom. I make my own tiny place in its wild immensity and I become part of this American mosaic, unquote. The same theme of the transplant, uh, transplanted intellectual applies to further to Dominica Radulescu's array of characters, for besides Mona Maria or Angela, for example, Mona Maria's father uh, is this Romanian university professor who comes to visit his daughter in the United States, uh, and he has problems adapting to the new reality. My father regrets every day that he wasn't there to help during the, the revolution. So he departs uh, just before the Romanian revolution in uh, 89. He feels like a coward because he left everything to live in a country he doesn't even like. The suffering of this intellectual who, who fled the country, who chose to, to, to um, leave his country, is profound as he talks with sadness about how much he would have wanted to go back and see what the Romanians have done with the newly acquired freedom. And because here he is mad all day, as he has no communists to fight against, he is not surrounded by the musicality of his language, and because he doesn't like the tomatoes, the tomatoes from the supermarket. Market. They have no taste, they taste bad, 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 as he insists on repeating this. Uh, to sum up, the displacement experience of Romanian subjects does not remain confined to the parameters of a painful exile. If the exilic experience in the case of Romanians informs an ideology of inadequacy, this phase is but a stage for as we approach late 20th century and early 21st century, writers and scholars leaving Romania or already living in America in the 90s mark the beginning of the so-called nomadic turn in transnational studies as contextualized in the case of Romanian diaspora. 
to talk about the reality in which they nowadays live and to impart their views, Andrei Codrescu, Gabriel Plesha, Mirela Rosnoveanu and others return to Romania and go back to the United States in a transborder movement, adding that transnational dimension to the Romanians of, uh, transplanted in the new world. But as I, I wanted to, to say here or to leave it as an open, let's say, uh, uh, line for discussion, this is a subject to be developed in another story. To, to keep to the title of the of the conference overall, Memory and Narration. Um, what I also want to show you is uh, in the last slide, uh, under selected references, exactly the um, pieces of fiction, uh, of prose, where from I have taken all of the quotes, let's say, for the um, uh, for the paper and for my presentation today. Uh, that's it from me. Uh, if there are, uh, I mean, I think that there are no questions at this point because I know that there are left until the end of the of the presentation. Um, and with this, I would kindly ask uh, Dana to take over and continue, maybe with the other colleagues. Thank you so much for your attention.